Welcome to Five Strike Weekly. The King returns and a teenage goalkeeper saves our butt. We recap the first win of season five and delve into the news from the past week. All that and more coming up. Welcome to the show, Five Strike Fam. I'm AJ and I'll be joined later by a special guest, Chris. And wherever it is you get your pods, subscribe, share, and leave us a good rating. This segment is sponsored by Thinking Man Tavern, a cozy Decatur neighborhood pub. Grab a tasty beverage from a wide variety of selections and a plate of something delicious from the menu. To go, check out Thinking Man Tavern. So first up, let's talk Jeff Lorenowitz retiring officially. I think we all kind of maybe saw it coming a little bit, but uh, yeah, when he wasn't offered a contract by Atlanta United, well, I think the writing seemed to be on the wall. But uh, yes, he, he did announce this on social media, which is perplexing because uh, he doesn't really have any official social media. So uh, that is kind of a uh, kind of how did he do that? Uh, it was sent through somebody else. Uh, and yeah, it was uh, kind of officially posted out there that way. Uh, and on Twitter, he did uh, pretty much give a, uh, a kind of parting uh, kind of almost eulogy to his MLS career, uh, thanking a lot of his coaches, uh, notably Tata Martino as well on Atlanta United. He did not really thank uh, some of the other Atlanta United coaches, but all good. Uh, we won't look too much into that. Uh, maybe... Maybe that's a good thing. But uh, yes, uh, Lorenowitz does leave MLS as a very pretty much uh, yeah, storied winner. Uh, he won MLS Cups with not only LA United, but also with Colorado Rapids. Uh, he was you know, drafted by the New, York, or New England Revolution, and he was part of that uh, run where they made four straight MLS Cups that they didn't uh, didn't quite win but uh, either way he's just a you know a guy that uh, you know from the very beginning struggled uh, with only making about thirteen thousand dollars a year on that uh, kind of MLS minimum and he fought through the MLS PA to make sure that the minimum uh, for the players uh, for MLS were getting the right due because it is uh, pretty difficult uh, even back then in about, what, around 2004, 2005 uh, to be able to yeah live on $13,000. I mean, you pretty much have to pick up a, a side gig to be able to you know do your thing, but... Yeah, he's known uh, around MLS circles as very much a uh, clubhouse guy that uh, is wry with his humor. He definitely uh, is always quoted as one of the best and funniest characters on the team. But on the pitch, he's a guy that's defensively, as a midfielder, uh, one of the best. One of the best to do it ever in MLS for sure. Uh, he finishes his career in MLS with 437 career regular season appearances. And he's only the second field player in league history to reach that number. So definitely he has a storied career in MLS for sure. Uh, for me, yeah, he's got a lot of beautiful moments for Atlanta United. But his best moments, oh, it's uh, we got to pick from a few, I think. And uh, it's got to be that Rocket versus Club America in the Campeones Cup. That's uh, definitely in there. Uh, one of the other moments maybe off the pitch was his Who Has Beer sign in the MLS Cup Parade. Uh, which, yes, uh, legendary. Which, uh, you know, who knew at that point that, uh, you know, he was that nefarious. But, uh, and then... The, uh, another one's got to be the absolute manhandling of one of the New York Red Bulls players. Just shoving him to the ground like he's a little doll. Uh, that had to be one of the other kind of hilarious moments that, uh, yes, Big Red the Enforcer. Uh, definitely, he, you know, made sure that no one, uh, you know, <clears throat> no one could give Atlanta United shit. 
And uh, yeah, he definitely made sure of that. I think it's got to be uh, for the best moments. Uh, I mean, yeah, you win MLS Cup and then you uh, just get into the shenanigans. And so definitely uh, the who has beer sign has got to be top for me because at that point, you know, you know you're a winner. You know you're a serial winner. And uh, yeah, he uh, just knows how to have fun while also being a, uh, a serious player on the pitch. Definitely, uh, you know, as well, he was our captain for the 2019 and 2020 seasons or the 2000 yeah 2020 seasons rather but either way uh he's been a leader for us for a long time and i think atlanta united history would never be the same if jeff lorenowitz was not included in it uh you know coming as a free agent from la galaxy it's uh you know one of our best signings ever he uh, has solidified our midfield for pretty much the duration he was with Atlanta United. And uh, it is uh, bittersweet to see Jeff Loretowitz go into retirement, but it is, I think, justly done. He uh, yeah received plaudits from everyone all over the MLSO sphere. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know... I think well-deserved and best to him in retirement. But uh, let's move on from that. And Atlanta United have announced that uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium will open to 50% capacity for the April 24th home opener against the Chicago Fire. Uh, the future capacity will be evaluated on a match-by-match -match basis. But uh, that might seem a little bold by some people's uh, estimations as... I mean, yes, a lot of people are getting vaccinations, and so it is getting slightly better. Uh, the 24th is a couple weeks from now, and so, you know, we would expect and hope that uh, more people will be vaccinated. Uh, 50%, yes, uh, probably pretty high, but, uh, you know, I think for that, it's bold. We can maybe just, if you are reticent, probably just don't go um but if you're vaccinated i mean the uh yeah cdc has already mentioned that traveling uh you know by plane with vaccinations is already pretty low risk so that bodes well if uh you know that's uh you know what you believe and so uh basically katie griggs the uh the chief business officer for Atlanta united she mentioned that we're excited to be able to kick off our 2021 season at 50 percent capacity this allows for seating pods to remain distance from one another while providing more of our season ticket members the opportunity to, opportunity to safely attend our first match so uh yeah there will definitely be health and safety guidelines uh in place still and hopefully uh, we all do our part to make sure that everyone is safe and healthy after, before, during, uh, you know, that experience that we no doubt are craving and want to make sure that uh, we can continue to have more of. But let's move on from that. And uh, yeah, some uh, news that really, I think, started to uh, pay off in our match against Alajuelense. But uh, it was announced on Monday that Rocco Rios Novo, 18-year-old goalkeeper, uh, is uh, signed to a short-term agreement for the match on Tuesday night. Uh, that four-day contract allows clubs to sign players on loan from their USL affiliate uh, for US Open Cup matches, CONCACAF Champions League, Amway Canadian Championship, and exhibition matches. And so... Yeah, he definitely has been, uh, yeah, I think we'll allude to that. And, uh, yeah, he was quite useful, we'll say, against Alan Valencia. Uh Kind of, you know, much of a surprise, but, uh, yeah. We can uh, also, we can only sign them to a maximum of four short-term agreements each season, a maximum of 16 days. So if we do want to use him uh, for the next match, it will be counting as another four days. So... Uh, you know, we'll have a limited amount of him to see unless we sign him to a first team contract. So it will be interesting. But uh, another player that was signed on a semi-guaranteed one-year contract uh, with two additional option years was defender right back Jack Gurr. Uh, the 25-year-old defender, he joins us from Atlanta United 2 and he's the fifth player to sign from Atlanta United 2. 
That's a uh, huge congrats because, yeah, Gurr, he's been in and around Georgia and uh, a few of our teams uh, for a while. And, uh, yeah, he was part of Georgia Gwinnett, uh, four-year starter for them. Uh, he played for the Georgia Revolution as well locally. And, uh, yeah, I had noticed that he had been a follower of not only LA United, but us uh, during that time and before he was signed to LA United too. It's uh, very much, uh, he's one of us for sure. He uh, might be a Jordy in uh, that respect where he uh, roots for the tunes in uh, Newcastle United, but he also is a five stripe through and through. So it's great to see this kid be able to come through and yeah, uh, get his chance because he has been balling out locally and for LA United too. Uh, and he's definitely, I think, in a position of need. So, you know, definitely, why not? Uh, let's move on to an update for Alan Franco, who, uh, yeah, it's uh, still hasn't been announced. He's in quarantine. So it's uh, one of those things he pretty much been, he's been chilling at the Omni Hotel in the Battery. Uh, sipping some morning mate uh, in his hotel, but he is no doubt thinking, when will this be over? But Matias Martinez did report that he has passed his physical and that uh, the deal is on. Uh, Hainze did incorrectly say that he was already signed a couple weeks ago or probably like three weeks ago now, but uh, that's incorrect. It's still not official, still waiting on the league approval. But, uh, yes, he uh, has been reportedly signed for $2.8 million for 100% of the player's rights. But if he is sold, Independiente get 50% of the transfer fee for anything over $2.8 million. And so, for instance, if he was sold for $4 million, then Independiente get $600,000. Uh, that's like $4 million minus $2.8 times 50%. And that's according to Cesar Luis Merlo. So... Uh, yeah, pretty good deal. It's uh, a guy that uh, definitely was going to go for more in previous times, but during a pandemic, it's quite the steal. So uh, let's move on from that. And MLS cl clubs can now have two more substitutes available for suspected head injuries. Uh, yeah, of course, we get three regular ones uh, normally, but now uh, we're... Sticking it out with the five regular substitutes from last season, uh, no doubt because kind of the pandemic is, uh, you know, obviously still happening. So, you know, we need to uh, make sure that we have uh, the players in the, you know, right fitness for sure. But uh, yeah, the new concussion substitutes, that adds pretty much to seven possible substitutes uh, that you could make. I mean, that's pretty pretty high and I'm sure there will be some tactical things uh, in that in the future that some coaches will try to take advantage of so we'll see it'll be uh, fascinating if some uh, some coaches try to maybe you know have a player feign an injury and then you know have uh, someone else come on maybe a forward or whatnot or uh, if they're trying to keep a lead bring a defender on so it will be interesting for sure but anyway, let's move on to LA United 2, and finally, finally, that we have some players that have been linked for a long time officially announced, and uh, a couple of those being Ford Matias Benitez from River Plate 2. Uh, Benitez, uh, yeah, he's a Ford, 20 years old, last season has played, uh, last two seasons played with the reserve team. Uh, he's played in 18 matches, 9 starts, scored 5 goals. Uh, yeah, and so he will start uh, with LA United 2, and we also have Darwin Mateus, who uh, comes from Zamora FC, uh, he's a Venezuelan, and yes, 19, he uh, spent three years with Zamora, and he totaled 62 appearances, scored 13 goals across all competitions, and uh, yeah, he's on that same agency that Joseph Martinez is as well. We also signed... Uh, a midfielder in Chris Allen. He's uh, 22. Uh, he has also, uh, yeah, he's played collegiately at the University of Charleston in West Virginia in 2019. Uh, he's spent 
time with Sunderland in England as well in their youth academy before coming to the United States. Uh, so he's a guy that comes with a little bit of uh, some European pedigree as well. And then Connor Stanley, who, uh, yes, a Ford, but also, uh, yeah, he, very interestingly enough, he comes from Manchester United where he joined the academy in, 2000, or in yeah, 2018 of August. And uh, he featured 11 times for the U18s in his first season. In his second year, uh, Stanley, he made seven appearances and provided three assists. And so the England native made the jump to the U23s this season uh, with Manchester United. And now he comes here. I think uh, those are huge, uh, in terms of landing at two, huge gets. Some very interesting prospects and uh, definitely some very young guys that uh, could turn out to be uh, maybe some first team players if they play their cards right. So, you know, definitely intriguing nonetheless at LA United 2 this season. And uh, let's wrap this in uh, the news segment up with Jurgen Dom and his TikTok, TikTok uh, you know, video of the trip to Costa Rica. Uh, you know, definitely, I think a lot of people have been clamoring for it and seeing what uh, that trip was like. Uh, very interesting for a lot of vids, and most notably that uh, he's a Twilight fan. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it kind of hasn't really been relevant for a while, but Twilight, uh, yes, I don't know if he did it for the banter and just left it in there, or uh, he's actually a fan of Twilight, but uh, yeah, I'm sure people will have some comments on that, so leave them in the comments below. But guys, so let's get into the match review, and I'm joined by Chris, our resident match tweeter on Twitter. What's going on, Chris? Oh, not a whole lot, AJ. Just uh, reveling in a 1-0 uh, win. Indeed it was, yes, 1-0, uh, and it was the first time that Atlanta United won the first competition in a season in our short history, which is uh, pretty ridiculous a little bit, but uh, yeah, as good of seasons as we've had, we don't start seasons very well, uh, definitely, you know, looking at that Red Bulls uh, 2017, also looking at that Houston Dynamo, 4-0 in 2018. Uh. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> there are other examples as well, but we don't need to get into that. We're getting into this CCL no. match against Alajuelense. And yes, uh, it is uh, very interesting because I think we can add to this that MLS teams, they've only won on the road seven times in CCL since 2012. That's pretty outrageous. And oh. so uh, for us to be able to be on that stat board in that way is quite, quite good. But uh, yes, you alluded to it. It was a 1-0 win. Uh, and we were away at some grounds that weren't really as hostile maybe as they normally are. No fans in the stadium. So that no doubt probably helped a little bit. Uh, and it seemed to play uh, pretty well to our kind of... Uh, standards we generally kind of want a, a carpet to play on and uh, it seemed like pretty good conditions not a uh, a farm field for sure so definitely uh good in that respect but uh yeah we uh we started off i think pretty decent 42 minutes of uh some good uh examples of what we're trying to do under gabriel hainsay uh what, what was your opinion of the uh the first 42 minutes I mean, I think it was great. It showed we showed a lot of intent, and um, Hinse was, you know, I was, I was just from his his time as a as a player, um, and the the times I've seen him, um, you know, coach and whatnot. Um, you know, I was curious to see how he was going to line up. I, I really like what he did with Sosa, and I really like the way our um, our front. I guess you can say you could technically say front. Or just by the way um, that uh, Moreni, Lennon, uh, Lopez, and Barco were kind of interchanging, um, you know, we were really taking the initiative, um, and it 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 should have paid off a lot sooner than it did, and it probably should have paid off with a, a goal from open play. But either way, I was very impressed with the way that we we started the game and the way we finished the game. 
Yeah, because uh, definitely some interesting stats before the uh, the red card that we will most definitely talk about. But uh, you know, we uh, we had some very, I think, uh, overwhelmingly good uh, numbers before that red card. Uh, Shots were in our favor, six to three. Shots on target, three to one for us. Possession was 64-36 us, and key passes were four to one uh, at Atlanta United. That's uh, according to Mike Conti on Twitter. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, pretty overwhelming possession stats. But also, I think I would just surmise for sure that everyone can fully agree with this that. Our possession looked a lot more, not only tidy, but purposeful. And, uh, yeah, would you agree with uh, that assessment that, uh, you know, we were definitely, I think, trying to think more forward with our passes? I would definitely agree. And even even when we were playing in the back, um, you know, we you saw many times um, a lot of the a lot of our, our back line you know they had eyes to the front line and they were they were trying to look to see if something was there and if not you know you play it around um, bounce it through midfield uh, it might come back but we were always looking forward and that's something that you only saw on occasions um with um DeBoer and you really saw maybe a little bit more of glass but this is probably the most I've seen since Tata was coach and um yeah we had a lot more um, we had a lot more passes that seemed to be incisive. And even though we still kind of got caught uh, around the top of the box, kind of looking for that extra pass instead of looking on goal, um, a lot of times, you know, we had people who were making runs to become that extra pass, which is something that we lacked a lot of, I think, last year. Yeah. And uh, I think a feature in uh, pretty much what was happening during that 42 minutes definitely was also Santiago Sosa splitting the center backs, also Licha mm -hmm. Lopez dropping deep to collect the ball and uh, spread it out so that uh, we could move forward as a team into their final third. And uh, yeah, I have to say, yeah, we looked uh, as exciting as pretty much, yeah, like you were saying, the Tata days for sure. Um, Yes, definitely. Uh, I think a lot of fans will be very encouraged by those first 42 minutes. But why I keep saying 42 minutes? Because uh, if you didn't watch the match, well, yeah, the 43rd minute happened. And uh, basically a back pass that was a little errant. And uh, yes, uh, you know, Alajolense gets on the ball there. And Guzan pretty much has to take out his man in a way. He... Uh, maybe could have gotten to the ball, possibly, but uh, that was not in the cards, and uh, he fully took out his man. Uh, but a little bit of a fracas, and uh, you know, ref is pretty much holding out a yellow card for about a minute or two uh, while Alajuelense players are surrounding him, and then he pulls out the dreaded red card, which, uh, in your opinion, do you think it's red? Yes, and I, I think I said that too on the in the tweets last night. That yeah, that's that's red. Um, it, and to me, I know that the, there's there's a variance in rules and whatnot. Um, whether you're in the box, out of box, whether you're trying to play the ball or not trying to play the ball. But you know the 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 bottom line is that you know any kind of contact that um, you know doesn't catch the ball. And catches the player, um, and it's a it's a blatantly obvious um, opportunity to be either one on one with a keeper or one on one with a uh, one on one with an open net. It's most of the time a ref's going to give that red card, and unfortunately for Guzan, he was the recipient of it. Um, brings back brings back a couple of uh, bad memories from um, a certain Champions League final in the early 2000s for me. But um... Sure. <laughs> I completely uh, understand where you're coming from there. Us being yeah. both Arsenal fans. Yes. Uh, yep, yep, so, yep. But yeah, I mean, it was red, and, I, and I, I get it. And we, and they said in the broadcast that we've been living dangerously, and we had. I can tell you that for the first half an hour of that match, um neither team played well um and when it came to in the back they they were always all the passes that i saw um you know probably about half of them were risky and we just happened to get burned on that um 
we should have burnt them on theirs a couple of times too but um yeah i'm if guzan i mean it's it's kind of twofold if if Guz hadn't gotten the red card, we would have never seen Rios Novo um, and his uh, heroics last night either. Indeed. And uh, yes, nice uh, segue to Rocco's <laughs> Rios Novo or Rocco Rios Novo. But uh, yeah, 18 year old steps in. He's on a short term agreement that he just signed on Monday. Uh, some could argue that he probably is our fourth string goalkeeper. But uh, yeah, Can Lungard didn't make the trip. And uh, maybe he was being, a, a, you know, rewarded for, you know, his uh, good performances during preseason in which, yeah, he did, uh, you know, show out a good bit. Uh, he did start the very first uh, match in that uh, kind of four kind of uh, four period friendly at the Benz versus Charleston Battery and looked good. So it could have been that. Uh, I don't think anyone would have expected that he would have been called to action so quickly. But alas, he did. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it is one of those things where, uh, boy, did he show out, though. Um, oh. I mean, to be fair, some of those shots were, uh, you know, right at him. But, uh, you know, I think he looked composed in that box. What did you think? Yeah, no, I would agree. I think the, the first free kick that he kind of fumbled, it kind of had me nervous for the rest of this game. Um, but he did well um, to position himself. And I think that was one of the biggest takeaways for me is that his positioning was spot on. Um, you know, the shots may have been right at him, but he was not caught out. It wasn't until the last um, seven minutes or so that, that the saves that he was just making, where he was getting low and like, you know, putting putting his, uh, making his arms, uh, you know, and his shoulders as wide as they can be and stopping yeah, those point blade big. shots. That, yeah. yeah, it just, I mean, it, I can tell you, that was, there is, there is, there's a period of time where there was a lot of doubt at, for the last 10 minutes. And, um, you know, after seeing those saves, um, you know, we were getting the stoppage time and I was like, I think we got this. Um, right. but, it, but prior to that, I was just, I was very nervous because he hadn't been tested really. Everything's been right at him, like you said. So, um, but no, he did well, he did really well. And I think he, did well enough to at least earn another look, um, an elongated look, I should say. Yeah, and that's really what's going to be interesting to uh, kind of slightly looking forward is uh, who gets the nod between the sticks. He definitely has, I think, earned uh, a very longer look, at least uh, in the next match for sure. Yeah. Uh, if not, he or Can or Lungard probably will, uh, you know, be one of the other keepers that uh, you know will be considered. But I mean, you know, he kept the clean sheet uh, and had six saves, pretty much largely in really only one half. I mean, stands a few minutes uh, in that first half. So you know, uh, that's also a new Atlanta United CCL record. Uh, last season, Brad Guzan had five versus Matagua. But uh, I think also the uh, the best part of uh, our new uh, keeper that uh, a lot of people discovered, uh, of course, yes, he's on loan uh, from Lanus. He came in that deal with uh, Marcelino Moreno. But uh, yeah, Pesino on Twitter had a really, I think, astute tweet saying, Rocco Stash has earned a spot in the Atlanta United Pantheon alongside Tito's hair, Tito's thighs, Tata's sweater, Nagby's shoe phone, and Miggy's smile. Uh, I would add that uh, Joseph's scowl as well is uh, part oh, yeah. of that. <laughs> but, yeah, the uh, ice cold, the ice cold look that he uh, that he gives those that he is uh, that he is fathered. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. And, uh, but yeah, that stash uh, definitely adds some years onto uh, Rocco Rios Novo for sure. Uh, he he might look like uh, you know a little bit of a kid out there. I mean, he's only five eleven. It is uh, you know not exactly ideal in terms of size for a keeper, but uh, he looked every bit the part though. And uh, that stash also, I think, uh, <laughs> just adds a little bit of that cachet, a little bit of that mystique to his uh, now cult status, uh, well, for can't, sure. He can't shave it now. If he stays oh, he, with the team, he definitely can't shave hell it. No, no. It's, uh, <laughs> if he does, pretty much, I think he will lose all his powers, I feel like. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, 
that character, uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't remember right now, but you know, the longer his hair is, the uh, I think you know what I'm talking about. You could probably name it. Um, but the longer his hair is, the more power he has, right? All that type of stuff. Uh, so the longer, you know, Rock of Rios Novo has that stash or grows it out, maybe uh, starts to twirl it, the uh, more powers hopefully he does have. But uh, anyway, uh, let's move on slightly uh, to our goal, which uh, came about through kind of some controversy. But uh, George Bello, he puts in a cross and... Uh, Ala Hulense player is sliding across, trying to block it, but uh, yeah, I think seemingly blocks it with his hand because he's got it up near his face, but it in fact hits his face. There's no VAR, the ref calls penalty, and well, Chris, what'd you think of that call? What what did you initially think of it, and then, you know, what do you think I would say, uh... I'll say I'm thankful for the good old days of, um, of football where there's no VAR <laughs> at that point. Uh, VAR would have definitely overturned that, I think. Um, but, I mean, at the same time, when you... It's hard to say you can't put your arm up when you're sliding because of the way he was positioned. It wasn't as if his arm was like this. It was He was sliding, and it just happened that he pulled his arm... Um, he pulled his arm above his shoulder as he went down. So it... You know, it's a. It, it was more of a. I want to say it was bang bang, but it was. It was fast enough to where I can see why the referee gave it. But yeah, VAR would have definitely overturned that. But again, I'm not complaining. Um, I'm definitely not complaining. And yeah, it's... which uh, Atlanta United fan would? I mean, I think <laughs> at this point, uh, when you go down to ten men and your keeper is the one that's out, and you have an eighteen-year-old in goal, uh, yeah, pretty much all hopes are pretty much, uh, yeah, they're very much in the back of your throat. You are just, oh dear. And uh, but you know, we get uh, fortunate a little bit. Barco uh, takes the ball away. From uh, Licho Lopez a little bit, where he, he takes command of it. Uh, he's standing on the spot, and he puts it away in the bottom right corner. Uh, keeper does dive the right way, but uh, yes, he uh, you know has taken count. our penalties in the past. Uh, what were you gonna say? I said they all count. It they was... all count. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Uh, but yeah, Barco uh, does do it from the spot for us. Uh, nice little celebration as well, and yes, uh, we lead 1-0. And uh, at that point, a lot of fans were probably going to wonder how we were going to do it. And, uh, you know, bunker or, uh, you know, continue to try to score a goal. Uh, I think you saw a little bit, kind of a combo of that. I think we were sensible. Yeah? Yeah, I would say that it was, it was a fluid game plan, I think, throughout the second half. I mean, we started out on the... We started out trying to press a little bit, maybe the first two or three minutes of that second half, try to keep them in the back. And then, you know, as soon as it, it was clear they had possession, you saw everybody kind of backing away. Then after the after the penalty, it was more of a, it was kind of more of a counter philosophy um, with not parking the bus, but just at least keeping, um, you know, six to seven back at all times and just trying to attack with the, the designated um you know forwards or wings um mm -hmm. you know a, a bar was very was very good um in the middle and in keeping a lot of the play for um um i would say uh keeping it mostly in front mm -hmm. of of us and the defenders it, it was very there are times when they got behind us um but not it, surprisingly they they got behind us more in the first half than they did in the second half and so that was that was actually very nice to see um it's just the change in mentality is nice to see uh as the game is fluid so i, I really like that last night yeah and sosa uh was everywhere he was uh you know putting headers in uh oh, yeah, in the, yeah pretty much his positional sense is insanely good and uh that's uh, something that is going to bode well for us uh, for a lot of the future matches. Uh, yeah, you were talking about Ibarra, and I think, yeah, his energy was something that uh, mm -hmm. is just something we've been needing. Our midfields uh, between them looks very stout, and Hyman uh, didn't look too bad either, spreading out some of the balls. Uh, and 
definitely. Uh, I think props goes to uh, our defenders as well in Miles Robinson and Anton Wonks. Uh, it's definitely some uh, very, very good numbers uh, clearance-wise, interception-wise. Uh, definitely some of the ground duels that they won and, and that as well. But also aerially, uh, Miles Robinson uh, won all of his aerial duels. Uh, won five of nine ground duels, and Anton Walks did uh, pretty well as well in that regard against some stiff competition. Pretty much, uh, if we haven't said, yeah, this team is pretty much undefeated since November, and we beat them with four teenagers on the pitch, by yeah. the way. <laughs> so, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, 25 games apparently undefeated. We were able to snap that streak for them. That's uh, not too shabby with 10 men, for sure. So, yeah. you know, not too bad. And especially, uh, as opposed to last year, we only had, uh, in terms of turnover in, in this lineup, uh, it's eight of, 11's, uh, eight of the 11 uh, starters to, uh, last night on Tuesday uh, were starters from the 2020 roster. And so, yeah, just a few signings can pretty much make a difference. Uh, I think, you know, you see it notably in our midfields that uh, it's just a, a new uh, reborn midfield for sure. But, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, you know, let's give your, your final thoughts on uh, Gabriel Hainsey's first match of his uh, his era. You know, what, uh, what are the biggest takeaways for you? Well, I, I like the mentality of the team um, and it's it's still it's just one game in one official game in I should say um, but when we have the ball um, we're looking to attack with it and when we don't have the ball when we didn't have the ball last night we were looking to not hold the team not hold the opponents to where they were but we were looking to get it back and I think too often last year we were looking to hold the opponents to where they were as opposed to trying to get the ball back and make progress with it. And I think that's the biggest takeaway because, you know, we still didn't have, we just didn't have Joseph starting, right? And so, I mean, that changes a lot of the approach. Um, you know, I think that once we the team is, um, you know, that much closer to full strength, I'm really excited to see how how well we attack but uh even again i'll, I'll say shorthanded um as much as i as as much as we were mostly full strength you know like once again i think once joseph's back and we integrate him in there we still have and if and if the uh the combo of uh sosa and abara can can replace what we lost with with nagby um uh, then I think that we'll be in a really good position, and I, and I'm I'm really excited to see what uh what Heinze is gonna do once we have that. Yeah, and uh, you made a great point there, and something that we hadn't even alluded to or talked about yet was the return of the king, Joseph Martinez. Oh boy, uh, I think all of the Five Strike fam were absolutely ecstatic to see him on the pitch again, and uh, yeah, he had a chance there. In that second half, uh, yeah, it, he was offside, but still, like, made almost a really, really good run to uh, get in on goal, which is uh, definitely the the type of uh, runs that you want to see him make and burst into space. Oh, and yeah, uh, yeah it's uh, very encouraging indeed. Also, need to give another shout out to Brooks Lennon as well. I think, uh, yeah, he oh, he created, was immense. Oh yeah. Like uh, and he was still energetic through the pretty much all ninety of those minutes and uh, created a team high three chances, put in six crosses. I mean he's uh, yeah definitely showed some good things uh, playing right back, you know. And uh, I think you you saw that uh, you know in possession it was uh, definitely more that uh, yeah Sosa kind of split the center backs, but then also Bello kind of stayed back a little bit more too, I think more than usual, and so it allowed us to. Uh, to pretty much have a kind of right back optional type of uh, just let him bomb forward as much as possible type of thing. But uh, yeah, did we get away with one? Possibly. Uh, you know, it was very gritty, gutsy. Uh, definitely, though, uh, kind of mirrors maybe those uh, maybe Minnesota United matches that's where 
uh, really tough when we went down to 10 men and uh, were able to eke out the victory. But uh, yeah, I mean, for me, uh, this is up there on definitely maybe top five of our uh, best wins in our history in that sense because we, Ooh. yeah, we we had to, we had to play four teenagers. <laughs> so yeah, and it's the first game of the Gabriel Haynes area era. I mean, it's yeah, uh, it's hey, top Brooklyn. five for sure. I don't, I can't. Okay, I've heard them talk about the uh, <laughs> the, Mount, the Mount Rushmore of LA United wins. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if yeah. I can like pretty much fully or coherently uh you know <laughs> rank all of them right now but it's in there it's in the top five trust me but uh <laughs> but uh anyway uh, some last parting little uh, quotes from the match uh was that uh Hainsey was asked if uh everything that happened in the final minutes of the first half if he was surprised that atlanta united earned the win he said quote i'm not surprised at all that's uh ooh, that's <laughs> some like ice cold baller uh just ice in his veins he he uh he expects this and that's a, a really really good mindset for sure uh apparently Hansei told Rio Snobo that uh to just enjoy the moments and uh yeah despite him not having played a first division match in Argentina uh he said uh that we didn't care about that we liked him so that's that utmost confidence that he has in his players that he puts out there too I mean that's uh, huge, huge, and uh, huge. yeah, and uh, yeah. To leave it on this as well, Brad Guzan did uh, offer a bit of an apology on Twitter. Uh, he said, uh, "Disappointed to have been sent off, but what a performance to grind out a hard-fought three points. Well done, lads. On to the home leg next week." So yes, indeed, uh, on to that home leg where we got that crucial away goal and we kept them off the board. What's your confidence going into that second leg? And uh, does Rios Novo start for you? Uh, I don't see why not. Um, I don't think that he did anything to hinder his chances. Um, it really just depends down on... It really just depends on how much uh, Heinze believes what he says. And, um, you know, um, I think that he'll, he'll have a very strong consideration to go ahead and play him. Um, but my confidence, you know, with 11 v 11, it was, you know, we more than what we more, we more than held our own. Um, I don't know if he'll use the same type of tactics in that leg since we're nursing a one no lead. Um, we might want to get the, get a goal early. And I think if we can do that, then I think that we'll, I think that we'll more than likely be able to see it out. But um it'll i think it'll be tough because this was a good team that that um that we played and i think that they're going to feel very much harsh done by um with the referee's decisions last last night and they're going to come on fire yeah and uh definitely yeah they they came on strong in that second half i mean definitely uh 17 shots to our six ultimately but uh again we were down to 10 men and uh we expected that it was going to be a barrage of uh direct play and that's what they did they weren't efficient in front of goal, and uh, you know we took our chance, and uh, that's at the end of the day, that's football, and uh, you know we uh, we played it better, we were more efficient, but uh, let's wrap up this match, and let's pretty much wrap up the entire show except for the question of the day, and the question of the day is which player has you most excited for 2021? Let us know in the comments below. Could it be Santiago Sosa? Could it be the return of Jose Martinez? Could it be any of the other players that, uh, you know, maybe we haven't seen? Probably it's going to be the mustachioed man uh, in the comments. Uh, we'll, we'll find out. But uh, we're looking forward to your comments below. But guys, that's the episode. Remember to uh, like, share, comment, subscribe. For Chris, I'm AJ. Remember to, uh, yes, just give us love. But anyway... We'll see you in the next video. Yeah.